The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay, the Red Santee, and just want to let you know that Yes, Olski and I have finally caved in. We've got us up a Patreon. Yes, Turnbuckle Tabloid has a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. We've done it. We said, fuck it. If you guys want to be a part of the show a little bit deeper, more in, more in depth, in, in, intense, uh, get more involved in the behind the scenes and be a part of the show in a more intimate and sensuous ways. Why not pay for it? Go to Turnbuckle Tabloid's Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. You guys can be a part of it. Check out the tiers. Things that might be able to fit your needs when it comes to us here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. So guys, please help us out here. It helps us to build the product, better audio, better apps, better programs, and of course, helps us to build us to be a better podcast, although we're awesome as is but still regardless your 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 contribution your contributions your shillings your 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 bits of change can help us to grow here at turnbuckle tabloid so once again patreon.com forward slash turnbuckle tabloid be a part of the extravaganza and the ridiculous and buffoonery that is turnbuckle tabloid join us on social media and as well as all the podcasting outlets and as always enjoy the show Hey yo, it's King Capo, Matt Travis, and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloids. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Yeah, what's good, everybody? Jay Santi, as you guys know already, you're listening and partaking in Turnbuckle Tabloid for some time. Just wanted to let you guys know that uh, we've been we've been doing the shows twice a week. Want to thank everybody who's been partaking in the the splitting of the shows. Numbers are are, are increasing greatly, and appreciate that everybody is drawing more to the the split of our shows. I know sometimes listening to the episode can be as though as you're watching Ten Commandments or Ben Hur, and, and you guys took your time to listening to three to four hour shows each week. But figure that on this end, we do our take and say, you know what, make it easy for you guys, split the shows up, and make sure that uh, you guys could get the 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 buffet and uh, the the morsels and and the the, the samples that you want to have it. So everybody, uh, want to thank you again for for being. Um, patient and and we appreciate your time and and our previous episodes but I, I i'm also most grateful as well as oski that you guys have been taking the shows for what they are the past couple of weeks with that being said with the the occurrence that happened here in the states with our elections and that seems to have not only hit us greatly but also hit the world in an immense fashion and force what we're going to do is we're going to air our opening salvo on this episode as well. For those who missed it on the first part, well, we thought that it was important that you guys heard our take as well as our feelings of what's going on with the country and possibly the globe. It's also a, a, a reminder of our freedom of expression and speech that we are so graciously uh, able to have. And many don't appreciate that it's available in this country. So once again, thank you for your time and your patience and um, hope you embrace this. And plus, you know, to be honest with you, we enjoy the, the sounds of our voices, so, especially me. I'm such a whore for attention. I 
I basically want you guys to love me. So basically, enjoy this and uh, enjoy the rest of the episode. Thanks again for your time and have fun. Because we haven't talked about it. Because I was talking to like you know you know best friend and everything. What does this mean to you? Uh, nothing really. I'm <laughs> just being. Uh, I mean, nothing. My I, thought I about mean, government so, yeah. is still the same. I'm still. I know, I'm but, still skeptic. I'm still skeptical about all. But you have to have some sort of glee, a little bit of smile, a little. Okay. Uh, this is what happened. Uh, Lion and Better came out of work. I told you to come around a certain time because you know I needed to rest. I I was tired from work. Yes, sir. Uh, I was also waiting for Super Producer Sally to get picked up. So I got up around 11:20 because I was I, I was expecting her to come tell me that she's leaving. And from the living room, I hear the upcom- the incoming votes from Philly. Yep. And he went up another 3,000. And uh, I was like, okay. I did turn over, ready to go back to sleep because, you know, super producer didn't tell me anything. Then all of a sudden, you hear the the music, CNN music. And, yep. and you know that music at this point. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, we have a report coming in, breaking news. And, and, and it's it's funny because CNN has been low key staying out of the, the projections. You know they want to make sure everything's done because of all the shit that this piece of shit has been doing to them all through his whole tenure, the whole four years. CNN has been staying low key. It was actually the other the other outlets like the Fox News and such that were doing the projections more. The APs were giving the projections. They were already giving him Arizona since like Wednesday and shit. CNN was like, "Nah, we're gonna chill. We don't say much." They can't. Then all of a sudden the numbers start coming in and then boom the projection came and it was announced that he's projected to win the presidency, Biden. So I'm laying there and the first thing that comes to me is thank you. Thank you, America, for proving me fucking wrong. Yeah, they proved you There's wrong. There's nothing more satisfying to me than being right. I love being I love being Who right. Who doesn't? That's my shit. Who doesn't? It's it's like scoring a fucking touchdown. In, in the Super Bowl That's But being proven wrong In the positive way Is like scoring The winning touchdown Right In a football game Right And you said it last week Please prove me wrong That's all yeah. I ask To prove me wrong So um, I, I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna give my My, my, my negative Fucking points about this But before I do that I'll just give the, the positive stuff I laid there And I literally started Welling up because you got emotional, I did. Because this morning I was sitting there listening to TikTok. Why the fuck was I on TikTok? Oh, I was fucking bored. I guess it turned into a white girl like me. Yeah, right. I was a, I was a thirteen year old white girl, and um, <laughs> I go on there and I saw an, uh, a, a, a such a such a push from the white community in such a positive note on trying to educate their people about they have no idea what oppression is. They don't know what it is to be. Uh, segregated They don't know anything about Having to deal with Fighting from beneath They don't know anything about Having pride in themselves Because you You know What they were saying is You know You guys were given everything Now granted You know I know I know You know People who, who struggle And they're white And such like that I get it But there are those that you don't that they don't understand the fact that that color of your skin automatically gives you a pass. It's it's hard to believe, but it's true. It is true. If I walk I into a with door it. with you somewhere, they're not following you in the store. They're gonna follow nope. me. Fact. You know, I, they, I, I, I've witnessed it. Now, you know, I've gotten I've gotten white privilege fucking uh, passes with because of you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why am I around? No, I'm yeah, and that's what I use you for. <laughs> you're the white token. That's why I have you on the show. You're my white token. Well, you know, I'll take that with the uh, no, but seriously, pride. you know, it, it was it was great to hear these these individuals tell their fellow countrymen that our country is built on diversity, built on build uh, on building. Up the next man Not sitting there And degrading someone Because of their skin Or where they come from There's a young man Who sits there On TikTok That I watched a few Of his episodes And he was talking about He loves combating The anti-right I mean uh, The uh, the alt-right Excuse me The alt-rights And the supporters Of, of um, God and country And all this And it's, it's like you, you're, you're really forgetting What your Your constitution And your Your country Was built on and it's sad that we live in a society to this day that we have to be reminded of that. 
I have to I have to look at my daughter and tell her that yes, there are some horrible people in this world, but with that come the good people, and the good people came out to vote. Listen, you could get mad at me all you want. People have already said a vote of a non-voter is a vote for Trump. Well, I look at the opposite: a non-voter is a vote for Biden. Whatever. But at the end of the day, I have my own is my my own issues with government. But I always enforce and tell people, go out there and vote. You do your due diligence. You go out there what this foundation is. Just because I have a right to vote doesn't mean I have to. Just because I have a right to own guns doesn't mean I do. Or maybe. Well. Uh, who knows? <laughs> but that's the that's that's the that's the will of the people. You have that right for choice, and that's what this country is built on. And when you when you see individuals who don't understand and they don't get the the, the the foundations of why we fight so hard for 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 the belief of what should be the standing of this country. It's a terrible thing. You know, the first thing that people tell you, well, if you don't like it, love it or leave it, pal. And it's like it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I, it, this is it's not like me finding a new apartment. This is where we live at. Yeah. And for all you fuckers who are sitting there going, well, you know what? This is gonna be a socialist state. No, it's not. Oh, I'm, oh, the amount of people I'm seeing right now on Facebook saying that we're doomed and that uh, I have no mercy for the people who voted for this old old pervert. Codger, this old pervert with his QAnon fucking uh, nonsense. Let me explain something to you clearly to you guys. And for you guys who are who, who, who listen to the show and still support us even though you don't follow the beliefs. Because my beliefs, like I said, it's not left, it's not right. It's what's right for the people. That's all I give a Agreed. fuck about it. That's I all I care about. But for you guys who, who, who listen to the show and you guys have your own firm beliefs, and, right, and you know what? More power to you because I listen to a lot of you, a lot of you people go at me on my personal social media page, and I've had conversations and I've I've had debates and I've gone back and forth for people, and I'm okay with having these conversations. To you, I'm not I'm not directing this to because at least you guys still stood strong and listened to us even though we we will go on our rants. This is the 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 the, the ideology that I went with when I when I started seeing and hearing all these outsiders and talking this this this. Rhetoric about God and country And we have the right to bear arms so Socialism is not coming here man We can't even get a fucking healthcare system And you really think socialism is coming here You re We can't even get legalization of marijuana Nationally Because honestly What the fuck we let people get drunk We can't let people get fucking weeded I mean let's well, be get, real Well that's changing so. Well that's state by state But this should be a national, it should be national. It should be a national thing Cuomo said it's going to be illegal, illegal by the end of the year We can't even get free schooling <laughs> You, you, you know, everybody goes, well, look at Cuba, look at uh, Venezuela. Look at, the motherfuckers get free education. We don't get none of that shit. No, we there's don't. No, there's no socialization here that you guys are worried You guys are worried about all these big things. They're going to take our guns. You Keep your fucking guns. I told you guys last week, the the, the NRA, the NRA is going to fucking, they, they built their, their, their whole basis on running this country, man. Mm -hmm. You guys, you know what Walmart did? Walmart said, you know what? We're not selling in store, but yeah. You still can get it online. They're not stopping selling their guns in fucking in rural fucking areas. You guys want to go out there and shoot six buck fucking deer? That's your business. If you got to use an AR-15 to kill a moose, that's your damn business. <laughs> the mook, the moose. I don't give a fuck if you want to take if you want to take a flamethrower to your fucking cousin Pete's house. I don't care. That's your fucking business. But the country is not gonna sit there and and, and fold because one president came in. What he did do. Is he's coming in and he's showing that there is a diversity that needs to be changed, and that diversity is for the better for our people. Yep. You got cities just like Philadelphia, cities like Detroit, progressively cities uh, in Atlanta, Decatur, um, and Arizona, which was the the that that community, the Native American community, built up and stood up and said, "Fuck this, we're not taking this shit." Also, cities like in Nevada, same thing. You you got to take in consideration. That these are progressive cities that are not the white people cities. These are people who came in who are the people of color. Yeah, they can vote too. Ain't it Whoa. something? They know how to fill out a form and slide it in an envelope and slide it in another envelope and say, you know what? I'm tired of this shit. And it's not even about the 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 the, the back and forth backlash of of of. Uh, of the blue versus the black or the whites versus the black or the. It's not about that. It's about people. Joining with people and showing that we 
don't have to live in this society anymore. And please, let's not even go about the whole fucking the, the, the state of this year with this COVID and this anti belief that you know science will it can't prevail because you know God is gonna come and make sure it all blows everything away. We've been waiting for that. Prayers have been coming in and out while people are dying. Two hundred and forty thousand is coming in soon on the death total. We are seeing numbers escalate every day, like as though we're getting a fucking a nine eleven uh, an event every day in this country. And yet you still have individuals who can't believe Well I'm not wearing a mask Because my constitutional right says I gotta cover I don't have to cover her up Okay, Karen. No, no you don't have to cover up But you know what God damn it if you're not gonna cover up Stay the fuck home Be respectful of others And yeah Now here's my, here's my, my, here's my negative response It shouldn't have never been this fucking close with people No it shouldn't Let's be no. honest no, here No it shouldn't Should have never been this fucking close This well, should have been are, a, People are calling it a blowout This should No it, Because it, when the numbers come at the end of the day They're saying that Biden's still gonna win by a lot No, no it will be But you know what It should We shouldn't On the day of election Let, let, let me explain something to you individuals who, who don't understand how democracy is And just like When you, you listen to tweets of stupid ass fucking wrestlers like Jericho Which by the way I'm gonna go on a rant on his fucking ass later I'm on saying rundown Yeah I, Democracy is not built on a day one fucking promise of we'll get a winner that day. That's not how it works. No country works that never way. Never been that way. No, you got prime ministers aren't voted in that way. Um, presidents of other countries, they're not voted in that way. If a, if an election has to go three months, which we've seen that time in other countries, that's what it, that's what happens. Yep. Every vote needs to be counted. Every so, vote. in the standard of which occurred, we had the day one votes. The ones that you guys wanted for election day. That's the in one that was those are the those are the votes that, that were to be counted. Because why? Those count those those numbers can be counted quickly. They could be accurately done at that moment. And you know what? Those are the ones that you want to see, right? Those are the ones that the fucking piece of shit in office was sitting there talking about. Make sure you go out there and vote. Make sure you go Please out there and vote in person. Do not do not do do not do the mail in. Because I already had it loaded up because I was making sure the post office was gonna be fucked over. But you know what? People said, "Fuck that! I have faith in the post office, and I have faith in my communities and my counties that these that, that my vote is going to be counted. I have faith in the drop off boxes. I have faith in in in, in uh, the the board of elections. I have faith in these in these in these people. And shout out to all you civil servants out there who are doing the number crunches and who are sitting there under scrutiny, being threatened, being being fucking chastised, having your families fucking uh, uh, um being being tossed uh, tossed asunder because of these these these." Fools who believe in God and country and in the, in the document of the United States of America, but yet you can't sit there and fucking understand that every vote has to be counted. As long as they were in on time, those votes have to be counted. Well, we're all about the dead. Well, they shouldn't have died <laughs> during election season. Yeah. Well, they died. Yeah. And a lot of them died during fucking COVID. Want to know why? Because you didn't take it serious enough. The, the stories of individuals out there who are knowing that they were dying and they made sure that their last thing, their last, their last thing as American they could do before they leave this earth was make sure that they val that, that they ballots were in. They went in. It wasn't like they were coming back from the dead and voting. It wasn't like Casper was doing the voting. Casper the ghost. No, company. these were people who knew that they were on their deathbeds. There was an individual out there, and I believe it was in Nevada, who was a, a poll counter who had COVID and was there counting those polls, was counting those votes until the day she died, knowing she had COVID. Wow. Those are individuals out there that you give the respect to, that you say thank you, that you show love to. And, you know, and, and I, I have a great respect to them because my mother used to be that. I have family members that was like that. My mother was part of government in, in, in this city for almost 20 years. And they turned, they turned their back on her. And, she, and I sat there and I watched her. And, and, and the many times at night that she cried when, when, the, when, when her people in politics turned on her because she was doing a civic duty and trying to do her thing for... Her, her her friend who she believed would do right for the communities and the days that they went after her because a person that she worked for my mother was a head uh, uh, was a chief of staff at, at, a, at a high um, councilman's position in, in New York City in Brooklyn he was a majority whip here at a time and she was the lowest paid chief of, chief of staff my mother sat there and she busted her ass every fucking day. It was nights I didn't see my mother for three nights, four nights in a row because she was out there at community board meetings, politicking, doing shit for this fucking community. And I never heard her say to me ever she was tired. My mother went out there, busted her ass every fucking time for the minimum is paid to make sure that not only the community was fed, but so were we. And these are people that are out there that should. And this is the reason why I'm so fucking pissed off that government doesn't do people right. 
But today, this past week, those communities stood the fuck up and said, you know what? We're going to be counted and we're going to be heard. This man just won an election by over 74 million in a popular vote. That's the most that's ever been done. Biden has the most votes in presidential history. History. That goes to show you everyone named mother, except for me, everyone in their mother <laughs> came out to show that they're tired. They're tired of the fucking rhetoric and the bullshit that this man was on his four year platform of just lining his pockets, lining the people's pockets that he had around him, lining the fucking the the, the pockets of of the countries that he rubbed shoulders with and said, They're good, they're good people. No, fuck them and fuck you. Because at the end of the day, the real people who really supported this country and really had love for us outside in, 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 in Europe, the France, the England, those people, you fucking turn their, your back on them. And now you know the fucking bridges that we have to build to get back in good graces with them? Because now they look at us as like for four years, your country was run by a bunch, by a fucking a lunatic and a bunch of his fucking marauders. And we looked at it and just said, eh, whatever. But no, this year we didn't. This year we got tired of this shit, and I said it. I said it before. If <laughs> if he would have handled COVID, that fucker would have won. Yep, but he didn't. He would have won, but his pompous ass took this shit on like if it was a, a fucking business, or took it or took it as though as if he was uh, going head to head with one of his fucking competitors in a reality TV show competition, and didn't see that the fucking lives and the businesses and the jobs and the fucking economics was going to shit. We're gonna come back. We're gonna make the curve. Fuck you And you know what Curve your ass The fuck Out of this fucking position You know Cause people always sat there And said Well you know what He's a businessman So you know That means he could fix the economy You know what I could design a fucking building too I probably could make the One of the best Housing developments That could be the city scene But you know what You're not gonna give me A fucking tool belt And a construction company To do it I'm gonna get contractors And I'm gonna get Fucking a construction crew Who's gonna do it Yeah I can design it You gotta do I, I'll find somebody to fix it That's why politicians Are politicians It's rare that you see a businessman come into politics because they can't play the game like politicians can. They built for this shit, dog. Yep. That's why the lobbyists still live the way they live. This is why the fat cats are still getting their pockets lined. Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, them two old decrepit fucking crypt keepers who should be at the fucking cemetery's door are still fucking <laughs> making money. Still fucking making money, hand over fist. But you know what? At the end of the day, when all is cleared and all is said and done. And Jay and Oski sit here and we fucking looked and we was like, fuck this because people are stupid in this country. I thank you. I thank you for proving us wrong. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, what truly matters is not that the fucking president is up there and saying that he will make sure that everything turns out right because I had a little touch of God on my shoulder. No. You work for us, you fucking bastard. You forgot that. You work for us. We're your boss. You forgot that. And I'm happy to say that today marks a day that although we already know that he's not going to go out easily. Oh, he's going to be pulled out by military. That motherfucker is going to be kicking and screaming and crying like a little bitch walking out this fucking door. And he's going to make it clear that he, he he's going to do like fucking Denzel and training day. You forgot, motherfuckers. King yeah. Kong ain't got shit on me. He's gonna go out. He's gonna go out. His kids too. You fucking slimy, greasy sons of bitches. All the whole lot of you fucks, except for Baron. Not not that little motherfucker. He he good. He's, he's, right. on, he's good. He's playing Twitch. He ain't worried about it. He's like, can we go back home now? I play Super Mario Thirty Five. <laughs> can, I didn't like living here. Can we go home now? He probably misses his room with his yeah, base car yeah. bed. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> his fucking posters of like fucking uh Tory, John Cena uh, and fucking uh, um fucking uh, uh um Trish Stratus and fucking Mandy Dale Earnhardt. From NASCAR yeah, and, and, and he misses all that shit He's He wants to go play Fortnite with his friends He's tired of this shit Melania too Melania's like At right, least uh, uh, Can we cut the bullshit And get the hell out of here Like <laughs> she wants to get the fuck She wants to leave She doesn't want part of this shit But no He's not gonna allow this No And all the accusations Of fraud and all, You haven't it's been proven right It's an absolute right. fraud You haven't been proven right dog And not even once. so and Even his representatives are saying There's no proof of evidence of fraud You and watch everything out of his And ass. the fucking racist The racist uh, uh, rhetoric with his uh, You know Cities like Detroit And, and Philadelphia Philly. You know They're known for certain What you saying That's extremely N-words, racist uh, N-words do some grimy stuff Yeah a progressive city like Detroit With an 88% 
minority base in which their gut their 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 mayoral their political positions their their police departments all of a black heritage and background they're yeah. they're just a philly progressively philly who everybody shot uh, who was shitting on because of uh, uh they're they're like almost the slums of even new york city yeah. progressive and all you fuckers out there, all you give a fuck about is God and country. They're going to take that away from us. You better hope that fucking Biden goes in and helps with health care because a lot of you motherfuckers need to fix your teeth. Yeah, for real. And a lot of you motherfuckers, is out, a lot of you motherfuckers is out of weight. Uh, is, uh, is, 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 is heavyweights. Shape. Y'all out of shape. Y'all, y'all better hope that something fucking helps with your way. You better hope a little bit of socialism come out in rural West Virginia because... It's time for change. Yeah. The change that we got in, and, and before before I stop and before we cross into a wrestling program, because this is a wrestling program. Yeah, um, but this is this is a this is an American. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. American. Even, even though most of our viewers are outside of the country. <laughs> yeah, no, right. But I, I think that's what I like listening to too. But you know, before 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 we get into to that aspect and such of wrestling, I have to say that you guys, you guys gotta you you gotta take into into account. That we thought at least there was a small window of us, especially me. It was me when 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 that piece of shit was elected in 2016. I said, you know what? This guy's not a real true Republican. I really no. true believe he was originally Democrat. That he may have some kind of hope, may have some kind of idea of what could progress this country. Fucking a couple of months later. It wasn't even fucking two or three months later. He was already talking his shit. I was like, oh God, we're fucking screwed. Oh yeah, we are. And- I got fucking conned. And you know what? You know what, guys? Everyone did. And it's fine. The best thing about it is it's okay to be to, to admit that you were conned and you were fooled by this man because that's his job. A con man looks you in the eyes and tells you that it's not going to rain and all of a sudden your roof falls out and a fucking downpour comes into your crib. And that's just what a con man does. Yep. And you know what? It's okay. Now it's time to say, I fucked up. I backed the wrong horse. And now it's time to fix this shit. I just want to say one thing before we go. Just one thing. Because I know we're going to have to go to the next segment. I just want to say one, one sentence and one thing that, because a lot of people are like, Matt, you're, I've been told, Matt, you're white. This doesn't mean anything to you. This doesn't matter. You're fine. Number one, this this election showed me that character still does matter. Um, I watched CNN before and they got emotional with that fact and uh, it's true. Uh, character still matters in uh, in life and society. The way you treat others makes a difference. The way that you portray other people makes a difference. The way that you help one another makes a difference. And for the past four years, I've seen nothing but hate. I've seen nothing but racism. And I've seen nothing but just treating each other wrong. Yes, I'm white. Yes, I don't deal with all the the problems, you know, for, from others. And I'm sorry for that. You know, I, I, you know. No, don't apologize for being white. You're white. That's just all it is. But don't apologize I apologize for it. But. This is not a victory, you know, I, I hope you guys understand, I hope everyone understands that I am emotional at the fact that, 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 that we finally have a sense of change. That, like you said before, everyone stood up and said, fuck this, our vote matters, our vote will be counted, and we will get this man out of office because he's done nothing but, but portray hate and racism in this country for the past four years character still matters people were telling me look about look look at policy not just not character oh we hurt your feelings it does that don't what is what, what does that tell me you are as a human being it, it's 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 it, it's the past four years have been hard sad my dad was just fucking crying guys like honestly it's been rough but we can get better it's gonna take time but i hope you know that i i am extremely happy and proud of everyone who voted uh, Joe Biden, uh, I have faith in you, man. I really do. Uh, him and Kamala, Kamala, still getting used to that. But character does matter. So I, I couldn't be I couldn't be happier today. Waking up on a on a Saturday next weekend's the PlayStation Five. If you want to hear my other vote for that one, <laughs> and I just want to say that uh, let's go back to being the United States of America. Uh, that, that's our first word, isn't it? United. Stop with the bullshit. Stop with the hate. And let's work together to be a better country as a team rather than be on two opposite ends. So that's what I had to say because 
I'm very emotional today. Today, uh, the fireworks were out popping. People were throwing parties. It's a very, I think it's a success and in American history. And it'll always be remembered in textbooks as the day Joe Biden became the 46th president of the United States. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Turnbuckle Tabloid. I am your host, the King of Talk Style, the Cheap Thrill, and your 46th elected president of the United States. What? <laughs> Jay the Red Santa. And I am the Mook with the mic. I am the Funko Hub. I am a proud American today. Met fan Matt Matt Olski, baby Make sure you check us out All social media outlets Check us out on the Light Group page On Facebook Make sure you check us out On Instagram At Turnbuckle Tabloid Podcast As well as on Twitter At Turnbuckle Tab Also be sure you check us out On YouTube And on Get Vocal At Turnbuckle Tabloid As well as on Anchor And as well as All the podcasting outlet, outlets You have Spotify You have Google Play You have Google in, uh, Google Podcasts You have uh, Audible We're now on Audible now uh, Amazon Music We're everywhere Wherever Podcasts are You guys We're available to you guys So you can't say You can't find us We're all on outlets And if you're not If you can't find us there Make sure you check us out At RageWorksNetwork.com That's where you can get The the whole family Of RageWorks podcasts Call me when it's over Black is new Black uh, Toys and text Trek untold Everything that's all connected To RageWorks.network that, well, Excuse me RageWorks Network That's us RageWorks Network Is available for you guys listening pleasures and if you're into the readings if you're into looking into the uh the articles that have to deal with the pop culture that we are in these days the comic books the movies the tv shows the uh toys the video games it's all there at rageworks.net rageworks.net has all the reviews previews contests anything that you guys want when it comes to having your connection to all things that are geeky and nerdy and uh Things that the dweebs do Which is basically all of us And also I, I mentioned podcasts I forgot You had our first episode of uh, Yes uh, The Funko Hub Absolutely. Let everybody know about that man. Thank you guys The Funko Hub podcast Episode 1 Is officially out now On RageWorksNetworkPodcast.com It's on Spotify um, The the Based on what uh, our, our, our producer Rich And what my man over here Jay's telling me The 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 views are good so far. I'm, 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 the, the the feedback has been great. Episode two is coming very soon. Uh, like 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 I said before, it is a biweekly podcast talking about anything Funko uh, into the lives of people's collections, into what they love. Uh, Jay, how did you enjoy being the, the guest on the first episode? Oh, it was, it was cool. I, I actually got to sit there and, and talk something outside of wrestling for the first time. And wasn't it a breath of fresh air for a little? Uh, for a second, yeah, 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 it was yeah, like, yeah. wow. You get, yeah, uh, outside of the political rants we're going opening on the show, but other than that, yeah, it's always a fucking a blast to talk talk about myself and my um fucking dorky fucking collecting and shit. So, uh, every, every, which by the way, multiple f- people came back to me saying you should be a voice actor. Really? Yeah, you should be in the voice game for cartoons and for and for anything. You, I should do it for porn. I, I should sure. do voice acting for porn. For after the ads for I'm porn. Like, ooh, ooh, you like it, bitch? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> that sounds like a uh, guy. See, you, you see, you could be on like Big Mouth or something with that yeah, voice. Right? You know I what I'm saying? Shit like that. Uh, but episode one was a, was an astounding success. Uh, a lot of people are still downloading it today. People are still giving me feedback. So thank Thank you, everybody. The Funko Hub Popcast out now. Yeah, so uh, guys, make sure you check us out on all those networks as always and check us out on all the availability that we have there for you. So this week, ladies and gentlemen, on the show, starting off, remember, we split the shows up now. So bear in mind with me on how um, uh, just a rundown will be open to how we usually do, but I'll explain where go, what goes where. So, okay, so um, cutting a promo this week. We're going to discuss wrestling documentaries. Uh, finally, we've been <laughs> we've been kicking around this 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 premise for a while, but every week we found something new to rant about, and it was like, "Fuck, we got to talk about this shit." Fuck, we got to. All right, so finally we knuckle down. And this week we'll discuss uh, wrestling documentaries, fun times, and uh, backstage and the livelihoods of wrestlers and such. Which ones did we like? What we found interesting? Uh, pretty intriguing to to. To deep dive, I did a question on on Facebook and people responded to it. Thank you guys for being a part of that. Also, that will be on episode uh, one ninety four. Uh, coming two hundred. Yeah. Also, in episode one ninety four, we'll have our interview. Unfortunately, with the good news that we're hearing on this on this end for for many, there's also um, sad news where. Uh, this year, uh, this time of year marks the one year anniversary of the death of our guy Matt Travis, indie wrestler, friend of a show, 
And uh, as we spoke about earlier in early episodes and such, we said that every year around this time, we would play that young man's words and we would play the the legacy in which he left behind and which, you know, this day he should have been around for us and he should have been there uh, celebrating and being a part of. Knowing him, probably be like, yo, I'll fuck with, I'll fuck with Trump, but now nah, he got the goal. <laughs> Donald <laughs> Trump. Yeah, he got the goal. You're he, fine. He's not like Capo. Capo, Capo wouldn't have been able to fuck with that dude like that. Facts. So, um, uh, uh, we'll have a conversation. Uh, oh, from wait, 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 hold on, get ready. Sorry. Oh no, go f- yeah, finish. Finish from years past of, uh, of our guy Matt Trapp. So, what's that? Breaking news? No breaking news. Just um, um, you posted a picture of Samoa Joe, Joe Biden winning the U.S. Championship. Uh-huh. One of our one of our viewers said bye. <laughs> commented bye. I'm done. Not oh. happy with our post about Joe Biden winning. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> That's your choice. Freedom of freedom of choice, bro. Later. I just commented bye. <laughs> uh, uh, Biden. <laughs> uh, bye. Uh, yes, and that'll be episode 194. As for this episode and 193, we are going to have uh, wrestling rundown. Wrestling rundown this week, we have uh, whew, stories about uh, what do you, what do we have on there? I have um, yeah. I, have, I have a few. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. La, 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 I'm, I'm just Jericho. Oh, Jericho sounding stupid on social media. MVP uh, coming back at him. Yeah, multiple. having yeah, unfortunately having to correct him. Is his legacy really fucking decreasing? I, I mean, think so. This past I, year has been a it fucking is. real, like a, a real fucking clusterfuck when it comes to yeah. inside and outside wrestling, dog. I mean, Jericho, what the uh, hell? A member of Retribution has asked management to take him out of it. Oh, okay. Uh, we have... Um, AE Games. Uh, this week we're going to have a conversation that um, AEW Games is going to be happening this uh, this pa- this upcoming week, so we'll discuss what can be on the radar for them. And then um, Paige announcing the details of abuse he suffered from Alberto Del Rio. And Cody gets his name back. Wow. Yeah, so we got that installed. Also, around the square circle, of course, we'll read on... We'll, we'll quickly go and get vocal for that. I think we have time to do that quick. Predictions. We'll just, we'll just do that another time. Uh, we have predictions for Full Gear as well as uh, what we watch in wrestling. People are really riding high. Although we talked about it last week, I think people finally were catching up on it. They're really high, riding high on that on uh, Walter and Dragunov uh, match. Yeah, people man. are enjoying that, man. That was and people amazing. are loving. People are loving this UK stable or yeah. NXT right now. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We will return. Got some music for a friend of the family. Our girl, Amber Ray has a new song out. So, guys, if you want your songs played on our uh, episodes, make sure you check us out at Patreon at Patreon at forward slash Patreon.com. Oh, excuse me. Patreon.com forward slash Turn Global Tabloid. Just throw us some change, man. Play some of your music on here. Get your promotion out there, dogs. Come on. Be with it. Be yeah. with it, son. So, yeah, make sure you check us out there. So, coming up... Uh, 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 our, our family Amber uh, Amber Ray comes out with a new track and uh, don't go anywhere stay, stick around guys we will be turn
wanted you to know. I just wanted you to stay. I just wanted you to know. I just lost my mind. This is Loki. Don't call me Cabal, because if you do, I will kick you in the vertebrae and break four of your ribs. And when I'm not cutting a promo, being angry, miserable, or displeased, or kicking someone in the back of the head because they didn't say hi to me during catering, I'm listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid with Jay the Red Santee and Olski. Like, share, and subscribe. And if you don't, I will jump off the top rope and give you the warrior's way and cave your chest in. Give me a fucking mic! Turnbuckle tabloid, cutting a promo. Ah, the change in the air, ladies and gentlemen. The winds of change. Doesn't smell like shit too much you know, as, it, as it was in the past four years. Breathes in a lot of air for for all you people who are are, are uh, unaware. United States has has brought a new coming, a new rising in our leadership. Hopefully, it happens quick, swift, and without any issues. But knowing this piece of shit, yeah, he's not gonna make it easy for anybody. But that's okay. Nope. That's all right. For all you people like, it's not over yet. We're going to the courts. You better take that shit to people's court. Take that shit to fucking um, Just Joe Brown. That shit out of here. But other than that, cutting a promo this week, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be discussing uh, wrestling documentaries. Uh, yes, the wrestling doc. I um, I like to, I like, I, I like my uh, my fair share of, of wrestling documentaries where you could pull back a little bit. I don't need to know so much, but you could pull back a little bit behind the curtain. I'm more one of those wrestling doc guys who enjoys more about the wrestler than a um, an open re- like an open form of wrestling. I don't I don't I I don't want to know too much. Oh, I'm a complete opposite. Really? I love I love the behind the scenes videos of the interactions with Vince after they come back from a gorilla. I love I love seeing the clips of them go in the back and talk to the boys at, at catering and and uh, and get get emotional after a great match. Uh, I love the behind the scenes. I I, I care about the, the the people for sure. Like their their, their build up, their rise up is great, but uh, those 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 road stories, those back behind the scenes stories, uh, get, always hit me different. Yeah, I'm more I'm more into the the wrestlers. Um... Their their backlog, their stories, where where they come from, why? Well, this is why I I I find myself doing interviews the way that I do, because I like to hear stories of outside the ring more than anything else. I enjoy one one of the I always talk about one of the big ones that I enjoyed early on from WWE was the uh, documentary of Randy Orton. That's the, a good one. I yeah, know, I know which one you're talking about. Was it called Lethal Predator? It was like it was something. Yeah, I forgot what it was. Yeah, it, 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 he he it, it tells the story of which you know, and not to say that WWE has the better of the documentaries because they actually sugarcoat they shit. And they make Vince sound like a G. Which comes on the heels. We're, 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 we're talking about wrestling documentary, which comes on the heels in which Netflix has announced a multi-series documentary on Vince McMahon. Yes, they which have. Which is going to be very interesting because. I want them. I don't want the bull. I, I I want the real shit, not the bullshit. Well, I I don't know. If I want to talk about. I, I want you to talk about how he snuffed out the other the other promotions, and I want him to talk about how. Um, really, guy? 
My bad. <laughs> really? I mean, I just turned it on. I mean, the volume. I'm watching <laughs> Avatar on it, and I mean, the Avatar. I mean, the volumes is on. My um, bad. I I want I want them to discuss you know the womanizing and shit. The 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 alleged uh, uh, incidents where having sex with with other Trish women. Stratus. Well, <laughs> Who said no, that? No, with other with other women allegedly, but of, of <laughs> other women uh, at the top of of arenas while watching his his product, that kind of shit. Right. Those stories. And also, like I said, how he took out the other, the, the cutthroat dealings that he did for every aspect of wrestling. He even took out, he even tried to take out magazines. That's how devious this man, that's how cutthroat mm. he was with the business. He I wonder to, why they're best friends. Mm. Mm. I wonder why him and the man are in orange. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm interested in that aspect. But when it comes to wrestling docs, I'm uh I, I'm very intrigued with uh even Jericho's. I thought I, I enjoyed Jericho. So the Eddie Guerrero one was was great. Uh, um, the the fabulous Moolah and Mae Young, the lipsticks and dynamite one, I I was a big fan of. Well, what when when you started getting into wrestling and you started real, you started seeing that there were these other docs out there. What, what was it like? Kind of in, like an intriguing thing to go into. Like he's like, maybe I should know about this, but I'm kind of I'm kind of interested. Oh no, I was all in. Uh, the, the second I found out there were documentaries, I'm pretty sure the first documentary I actually bought. Myself was a documentary on Hulk Hogan that they that they sold on the WWE shop, and it came with a bandana, and it came with a <laughs> and it came with a Hulk Hogan pendant. I think it was in like an '05. I, I bought that, uh, but ever since I was little, I just always wanted to know more. I wanted to know like what the fuck is what the, what's what's the deal? I, I like what's the deal behind those those these early guys? wrestling documentaries were hilarious because. Um, they 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 basically were big commercials, basically. Yeah, they were just large wrestling commercials, and you you. It's all about promoting uh, the the item at the time or the person at the time. It was like you know you know I get it. When especially it was the Hulk Hogan one, and about it, it was almost like buy my shirt, make sure you get my make sure you get my my my, my bandana, brother, like that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But then when they they got more intriguing and more, I think the first breakthrough. WWE one that people were drawn to was the uh, um the the ECW one the Rise and Fall the Rise and Fall Ultimate Warrior as well I mean come on oh, those, oh, those, yeah, those, yeah, those, yeah, those, yeah, those yeah, contra- yeah those controversial documentaries definitely hit um a lot of people um and attracted them just because it wasn't just about the person's life it was like I said, the rise and fall. What what the fuck happened behind the scenes? I think that's the true hitting point for me with documentaries. Like I said before, it's like I want to know what really happened. I want to know what really and and if, and if this is the platform to show me uh, with uh, with 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 the credibility and people telling me uh, backing up the stories, then I'm all for it. It's like my General Hospital. I love it. Phone lines are open, are open. three one five three seven. <laughs> Home <Homework is> like... <laughs> Matt looks whiter than me. <laughs> Yo, for real. Three one five three seven one. Three one five three seven one four three six seven. That's three one five three seven one four three six seven. And I had a tan in like a year, uh, a month ago. It's that's. Hold on, let me see. Let me just try this. Did that help? Does it help? It might. Which, by the way, uh, quick side. Yeah, note, it helped. It helped. Yeah. Quick, 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 quick shout out to um, the notorious B.I.G. for getting inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yes, sir, baby, baby. I just want to throw that quick shout out there. But for let me ask you this: What's what 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 was your first documentary that you think that that, that touched you besides the Randy Orton? Like there had to be there had to be um, beyond the beyond the map. Beyond the Mat was the, the which is on Netflix right now. Yeah, Beyond the Mat is initially the. I, I guess you're gonna say. I guess you would say it's the. The OG, the godfather of the pure looking behind the curtain of wrestling beyond the ma- uh, beyond behind the curtain. Yeah, that was the um, I guess the the kickoff of a successful because it had a it had a, the- a small theater run, but it was successful, and it was the first time initially that WWE WWF at the time actually they they allowed outside parties to come and film them. Um, the the sell of it was that it was all shoot, but it you know it really wasn't. It, no, because was, Vince knew there was a camera on him. Yeah, he knows there's a camera on him, and then plus it was also the the I the idea is that you're not gonna get everything, but you got a not you got a lot. You got the you got the the storytelling of the Montreal Screwjob. You get the story of of 
Jake uh, Jake Roberts, Jake the Snake Roberts, and his dad. That story. You also get which the, that was rough to see. Jeez. You get the backstory of Mick Foley and uh, and his his feud and such with The Rock and Undertaker at the time. So it was a lot of it was a lot of uh, detail that WWE uh, they let go by. Uh, right. That 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 was um. Uh, that was one that Jim Fix, our friend that um Howard Stern, uh, uh, quite frankly, he that was his um, that was that was his favorite. Beyond the Mat was a is is a good documentary. I remember watching that on Netflix for the first time. Which, by the way, if anyone wants to know, yes, that was the the documentary with puke. Um, <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna puke. Which, oh jeez, to this day, amazing, amazing. Uh. Impersonation, and there. then you just see the you just see the um the mess, <laughs> the yeah. mess that was Jake. Jake was the a mess then. But then you also have the um the documentaries. Like I said, they look be, like beyond the wrestling that you looked at the wrestlers in general. Like the Jake, the resurrection of Jake was actually a really good one as well. Oh, I wow. was a big that, fan that, of that. That's actually one of my favorites. But the only thing about that was it was inspiring, but also it was a big DDP yoga commercial. Basically, that was a big DDP yoga. Group. Yeah, but that, that, that was that was before DDP got hot, though. No, nah, but it, that, but it, it really was. It, 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 he pretty much promoted that. That's what really was the sell for that. Of course. Well, that and, and it saved Jake's life. It could save yours. And which, he, you, you, know. you saw his 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 fucking his downfall, his, his spin out of control. They show it base by base of what it was. Well, I forgot what was the other doc. Um, there was the one with Scott Hall that we saw. I think it was on the Jake. I think it was in Jake's as well. It was. It was when uh, right, right, right. Once Jake got better, he helped Scott. Right. No, shout out to Ronda. Ronda say his documentary was better. You got to. <laughs> um, I actually agree. I think Rondo's is uh is my favorite. <laughs> That's my personal favorite, uh, for sure. For uh, sure. Um, there was um, this card subject of change. I love that one because that's that's uh. So it's a it's a documentary about indie wrestling. Right. It was done, I believe, in about oh four oh five around that time, and a lot of guys that were um, that are in it have made progressive ways, and there's also some that aren't here anymore. Yeah. Uh, that one, I think, one of the focal points of that was uh, was Trent Acid, who was a, a a great wrestler who who passed away some time ago. Um, it's it's. That one, that, that one, I can say that I enjoyed because it wasn't about more of the the behind the curtains of how wrestling is put together, but it was more about how promoters and 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 the fans come together for wrestling. And that that I that I I can say was um it was a good eye opener for me. What was another one that you enjoyed when it came to documentaries? Documentaries, I mean, I love 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 um. The Eddie Guerrero documentary. Uh, oh man, yeah. Uh, you know, after he passed, that documentary it just it brought, it brought everything together for me. It, it, it was the missing puzzle piece to my. Oh my God, this is what Eddie Guerrero did. Which, by the way, shout out to my boy. He just picked up the Eddie Guerrero new figure for me. Right. She's fire. Uh, but Eddie Guerrero is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I love. Another one I like a lot is the Edge documentary. Right after he retired. Because WWE then made a documentary when he came back, and watching those two back to back, from him accepting defeat and going, I can never wrestle again, um, doing podcasts, doing signings, with that same, and at that time him him saying, I don't want to wrestle no more. I came to grips with the fact that I don't want to wrestle to, I could fucking do it again. Mm. Inspiring, and it it was very well done uh, which by the way shout out to WWE documentaries their their late their latest documentaries they're doing on the network are phenomenal yeah i um, they're doing great work they're like, the undertaker last ride documentary i thought was absolutely great too each episode was fucking on the i was on the tip of my toes how good it was also the um ronda what's up Barry? yeah hey kai what's going on from wisconsin hey uh, uh, what's going on what's going another, on another 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 state that went out and vote man you guys did a phenomenal job this year yes, in, sir. in your elections um so yeah, the 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 you, you had those, and you also have the dark side of the ring, which has been boasting great numbers on on Vice, and people are so invested in each episode and every season that comes out. Dark side of the ring had great things from the Owen Hart uh, tragedy, uh, from Bruiser Brody to uh, um, G, um, Gino Hernandez. There was tons 
tons of uh, you know there, there, there was even stories that you didn't even know about no like way the, the Dino oh, Bravo and such like that Dark Side of the Ring is probably my favorite in terms of uh, learning more and um, the, the 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 quality is just phenomenal um, what was your favorite Dark Side of the Ring episode because for me, oh, that the Owen one was 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 the such Owen, a good, the Owen, but and also it's got to be it's got to be Benoit. The, the two part Benoit yeah. story was was out it was insane. I I didn't know any of the details they showed, um, which leads me to the asking you this: Is there ever a crossing the line moment when it comes to these documentaries? Is there ever a time where it's like, okay, we need to pull back, or it's like, let's throw it all out there and get yeah, like as I, much I, I, love as possible? Like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't really take too much with knowing way too much about certain things. Like maybe after the fact, you don't want to pull the curtain. Not too much. Like you know, Beyond the Mat was something different because when I watched it. Uh, I, it was like years later afterwards. Yeah, but that was truly exposing the business, though. That right. was like they went to the boardroom of events. Like, yeah, come yeah. On, son. That but like, I, I'm, I, I saw it after. I don't like watching. That's why the the, the, the WWE ones are really good. Yeah. But I don't really like watching them at that point, at that moment. I'm not a fan of watching them at that moment. No. No. I mean, for for me, I just uh, if you if you're giving me an opportunity, if you're giving me an opportunity to. To learn more about the business, uh, I'll take it. At the end of the day, we know what it is at this point. The, the curtain's basically pulled. I mean, for the most part, we understand the the, the whims and ways of this business. So when I get these behind-the-scenes stories of um, the the Montreal screw job, for instance, which that Brett and Sean documentary was always great. Oh, as well. that's that's a that's a that's a great one as well. Um, when they when I find out the Undertaker walked into Vince's room and said, "Make this fucking make this okay. Go and fucking apologize." Like those kind of stories, I'm like, ooh, it's not only tea. It, it's really important facts that that, that us as media well, should the, know. Well, the other one that the other one that um that brought me into the, the real fold that I became a real fan of, besides the um the destruction of, of Ultimate Warrior, which was like, ooh, yowzers. We, we can't even we, find this shit anymore. We watched that together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I was you like, yo, me I that. said, you gotta watch this shit. Yeah, you showed me that the buffoonery. Yeah, but, but you can't even find it anymore. Um, oh, Ben, Ben's in here. You have to call because you. I know you have all these on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. You have all these on VHS. Um, <laughs> the CM Punk Best in the World uh, documentary was one of my favorites. I Why? love that one. But what did it show you? Uh, what, what, it was, what, what, did it give you a different side of punk? Um. Well, first, first of all, you know, I was a big punk fan at the time. Anyway, but still then the are. Other, you just don't want to admit it. Uh, you came back, you cry. I miss him. No, the you're wearing um, a CM Punk shirt right now. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it gave the story of him where he it, it 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 felt more legitimate about. Listen, I was ready to go. I'm ready to leave. T- tell the story about the pipe bomb. Right. Um, his upbringing of him being in those bingo halls or those army, uh, the armories, where you know you were wrestling for a hot dog and a handshake, busting your ass for a fucking sixty minute Broadways, like, and that's that was the essence of when he loved wrestling, like he yeah. loved it, right? You know, going out there, having these big matches with Chris Hero and stuff, and those were things that they had to go get footage from other places that they had to get the Ring of Honor footage. Yeah, and yeah which I, I like better. I like when WWE or other documentaries they get the look, permission to do that, get, get the. When they say thanks to and they're all wrestling promotions at the end, I'm yeah. happy because that means they're all working together for the better um, purpose of the product. Yeah, and, and the, that one, um, Nicole said that hers was uh, "My Name Is Paul Heyman," which is another one I loved. I, I that's one I could watch anytime. Right. My name is Paul Heyman is because it's full of shit, but it's also. Because I, you know, I, I pretty much knew what really happened in ECW and such like that with the true tales, and yang, he yang, told yang. more. He told more of it outside of that 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 documentary in other areas, but it also showed the genius that is Payman. It showed how he got into business. He hustled his way. He is poorly hustled. Like he is that yeah. guy. Yep. Yes, sir. Heyman's hustle is not uh, just his his Twitter. That's him. He. He was a kid. He found his way to become. He was a photographer for for Vince Senior. He as a kid, he found his way into the business, and you know he wormed his way in and and rubbed shoulders with guys and started his own promotion. Uh, Jason, just want to point out. Jason posts um, in the comments. Sir, sir, oh, is everybody got a caller? Turbo tabloid. Who's this? Good evening, Mooks. It's Ben. How are we doing? Hey, Ben. ben. Uh, Hello. What's going on, Ben? Hold on, Ben. Uh, what was it that Jason said? Jason said, certain things you can't leave out when doing documentaries. If you're going to do it, it's got to be done right, and you can't leave shit out so people can say that shit didn't happen or they left this out. That's why 
that's why it led to that kind of thing. Basically saying, if you're going to do it, you might as well go all out and, and, and not leave any questions at the end of the at the end of it. Yeah, but I also like I'm also kind of I I'd rather read the book. I mean, I love documentaries, but I could read the like, that, the book, that, that, like the book that's for a, that's a of, preference. Yeah, yeah. I, I I a lot of stuff is more when you watch the um Ben, do you have the the Rise and Fall of WCW? Uh, I've got a few WCW ones, but no, I don't think I've got that one. I think I've got the best of Nitro and a couple of couple of those ones. I think I've got the Rise and Fall of WCW or the Rise and Fall of NWO. I'm not sure one of those. I've got so many, I fucking I get confused which is which. Yeah, but you you also get the other like the because over there in in England, you since there's not too much wrestling for for uh like state what well, we have state wise you 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 get like a lot of you get a lot of american stuff right uh yeah yeah we do, yeah we do all right to be fair you guys are everywhere aren't we so there you go yeah what's um what, what's a go-to if you want to watch a wrestling documentary which one what, what's on your go-to you to for to watch uh i like the kevin owens one yeah um, uh... i think the kevin owens one I'm trying to really good. I can't. The Kevin Steen is it? Kevin Steen is it the Kevin Steen one, right? Yeah, it's the one where he's he's in WWE, but it tells you it's a three it's a three uh, three um, DVD one. So it's about fucking seven hours long, but it's like the rise and fall of Kevin Owens. But it's a lot to do with him when he was when he was Steen, yeah, and like how, who who trained him. Um, obviously the R- Rougier or whatever his name was. The Rougier. Uh, yeah, Rougeau, that's it. Yeah. Uh, Jason, him and all that. Uh, Red, Jason says that's why they make the movie. Reading is for people who don't have cable or internet. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking about perf- we're talking from personal experience, JD? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, um, I, I, I have to. I don't think I've ever seen the Kevin Owens. I, don't, I think I missed that one. That would, that would actually be one I need to see. There you go. Uh, right. But Ben, what, 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 what do you? You definitely watched a shit ton of documentaries. Um, in the wrestling world, what what catches you the most? Is it the behind the scenes aspects of the uh, of the of the business, or is it the 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 climb to success, like the underdog story? What's your what's your what's what's the what's the story that makes you um, attracted the most to these? I like uh, the the growing up, um, you know how they became a wrestler. Because the most recent one I've watched, which is also a really good one, is uh, Welcome to Dudleyville. Right, um, the Dudley Boys. Obviously, being a big ECW fan of Dudleyville, Dudley is a huge part of mine. But yeah, I, I like watching how they grew up, how they became wrestlers, and because I think, oh, wrestlers, you know, they're probably quite well-off guys. But then when you realise the shit that they had to do, and all, you know, they slept in the 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 gyms and all that kind of stuff, that kind of thing, you know, it opened your eyes a bit. So I like where they come from. How they became wrestlers, I like that kind of thing. Really, I'm also a fan of uh, uh, the ESPN documentaries, the the, the Ric Flair, the, Andre Rick the, Flair Giant. the thirty, the thirty for thirty. The Andre the Giant one was a was a was a compelling story, but it was also a, a lot of facts wasn't really the lot of stuff there that were, that was mentioned weren't facts. Like it was there was there was so, stories of Andre being a heel and. Andre wasn't really a heel until later in his career. It, 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 when he came into the territory, that motherfucker was was a baby all the way through. So certain tales were he was just a miserable prick back in the back. That's what it was. But you you would be too if you're seven foot whatever and you fucking can't sit in a chair and the toilet. Give bowl, me my drink. You gotta sit in a fucking uh in a bucket to take a shit. Like you you would be miserable too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ben would know that, yeah, right? Ben, yeah. you've been there. Ben. You shit in buckets, yeah, don't you? I, d- I don't shit. I uh, I don't shit. I don't. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, just just quickly before I let you go, Ben. Um, uh, I know it's a wrestling show, but your thoughts about what happened today in the states? Okay. What do you want me? To, what do you want me to say? Okay. I, <laughs> um, the football opinion, game's on. I, all I'll say is I don't care as long as it doesn't affect us too much, which. I'm hope in the last four years it hasn't really affected us too much. Right. You know, you guys haven't gone to war with anyone for the last four years, which is something that Americans should remember. Like you haven't actually gone to war with anyone for the last four years. Right. Um, I think he's a bit of a dick, but I also think Trump's a bit of a dick as well. So is he the lesser of two evils? 
maybe. Time will tell. I don't think he's going to be, everyone's like dead excited, but I still think he's a bit of an arsehole. All politicians are arseholes. It's funny so. because I say the same shit about when it comes to um, things that happen in England. I was like, I really don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Well, I'll say on the documentary thing is, I think we are now seeing an evolution in wrestling documentaries now that we've got um, Dark Side of the Ring. I enjoy those programs more than any other wrestling programs I've enjoyed because there's so many different ones on people I've not even heard of. So I find that more interesting. Like, if you ask anyone the favorite documentary of the Dark Side of the Ring, they'll more than likely say the Ben War one, my favorite one was a Bruiser Brody one, because I don't really know much about Bruiser Brody, yeah. but that one was really, really, really fucking sad. And there's also um, and I, I, there's also documentaries yeah. that they have on Vice. It's called They're called The Wrestlers, and it's mm. it's more in-depth stories about just um, wrestlers in different areas of the world. They have stories about um, Nicaraguan female wrestlers, uh, there's another episode about um, uh, wrestling in, in Alaska. They have the the death match um, uh, episode. It's 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 really interesting. Besides Dark Side of the Ring, the wrestler is also one you should look out for. Yeah, yeah, I, I always keep my eye out for shit like that. Yeah. All right, Brent. Thanks for calling in, and uh, yeah, we'll be getting on get vocal soon. Okay, guys. Yeah, that's cool. I'll I'll, I'll be on. I'm awake now. Anyway, I've been asleep this afternoon, so I'll be awake. All righty, sir. All right, guys. Later, later, later Ben. Yeah, so uh, pretty much for me, the um, the documentary documentary road, uh, like I said, since uh, the thirty for thirty that that's going on with ESPN, um, you also have uh, um, the ones that that not many people know about. Like Kenny Omega has his own uh, his own documentary, which I'm not I'm I'm not sh- I'm not sure if it came to the state. You might be able to find it. It's a uh, wrestling of love stories. It's time in Japan, which is. Uh, when he was good, <laughs> you're right. When he was good, <laughs> sorry. Um, they they have um, also you know the Lucha Mexico one, uh, the Great Southsky. These are these are ones that people who want to get in touch with what outside of WWE, I would or what's going on in uh, outside the country. Those those documentaries, they're English subtitled as well. It, you you guys should check it out. There they're actually gems that that you uh, you, you should look into. Um, there was one I even forgot I watched this one, the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling one, which is very interesting. It was, it was brought together by. Well, you you watched the uh, the series on uh, Glow. If you watched the documentary, season one, it was phenomenal. Yeah, if you watched the the documentary, the the promotion was brought together in Vegas as something as a um, just a a a fly by night thing by a guy who had inspirations of. Possibly challenging WWF Yeah 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 But everybody didn't believe it But when they started seeing The ratings rise On Saturday afternoons People really started To you know, bank it That it could work It was very interesting And he would just It's kind of like How the series was They did they, He just started Cherry picking women right. But a lot of women Were like um, uh, End up being Professional wrestlers In WWF and shit It's, 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 it's kind of crazy Which is unreal Yeah um, But for me like I when you when watching a documentary, uh, the ask the, the, just just the, the variety of what you could get out of it just means the world to me. Um, the, from the CM Punk's to the, I think well I know we're we're saving the best for last. I know I know we're waiting for, I know I know we're waiting for the Paul Heyman one to talk about in a minute. But um, uh, even the smaller ones, the Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy documentaries, um, it, it they're more than just wrestlers. They're 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 human beings and the stories that they that they provide, the road stories how. Um, how it is not easy to become a WWE wrestler. It is not easy to become a wrestler, period. Uh, I, and I think these documentaries not only entertain us as fans, but I actually think it's it, it's great tape and knowledge for peop- wrestlers to be or people who want to become wrestlers to show, hey, these are my experiences. This is this is what I went through to get to go to the grind. This is what it takes. Shit like this happens. For instance, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, they told a story. They 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 sign up for a wrestling school. They they go to a gas station one day. They go get go get the promoter food, and the, he leaves. <laughs> Never showed up again. Left them hanging. Uh, and that's the some of the shit you have to deal with in this business. This business is not easy. This business is not a stroll in the park. And I think these documentaries that I've seen, that you've seen as well, truly show the grind, the ups and downs of of, of getting there. And it, it show. And I think 
if I were to ever become a wrestler, which I would never, it would it would tell me, okay, this is what Matt Hardy went through, this is what Sting went through, etc. This is what they went through. I should expect something like that in the near future because this is no stroll in the park. Oh God, I, you, you just mentioned it, and now now I could go down and tell you the worst ones I've seen. Jesus, um, there's always those hokey. Uh, Cheesy independent wrestling Rondo. promotion ones that they had. Rondo, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm kidding. You know the story of backyard wrestling, like that kind of shit. But there was one that they did the the story of Sting after his whole um, uh, separation from WCW and such, and and how he became a born again Christian and all that shit. And yeah. I'm like. And Shawn Michaels like, kind of had that, and it had like musical interludes and shit. That's, what the fuck hate, is this? Some of them Bret were, some Hart of them, had a bad one too. It was some, some of them were done very poorly. Yeah. Um, I hate to be a mean person. I hate to judge here, but um, the ones that happened in like 2005 and 06 when Mean Gene Okerlund like narrated them, I uh, found those kind of corny. Because like every time it would cut away, it would go back to him and go, "The true times of Larry <laughs> Sapisco." <laughs> it's like. We're going back to the times of oh, like, 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 like it's, it's, it's. Oh, it's stop it! A... I love those fucking um, the like the story times. I love story times, but I hate when Mean Gene used to be like, "Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is true. Bret Hart almost died this uh, this 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 hazardous night. Let's like, let's uh, tune into next week where Sean, Bret Shawn Michaels had addiction to Percocets. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like I I I like when um a camera follows the life like 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 the the 365 on the network where they 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 they, they give you a whole year of a wrestler in the life of a wrestler. I want to know how it feels to be in their shoes visually. <laughs> um, I want to know um the, what they are human beings. I know, right, Jason? Um, no, he's talking about um, Harambe. No, no, no. I, I, he said, what? They're human beings? I said that. No, 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 no. I, I'm following the conversation. Let's see what he's talking Did about. the gorilla and Steve Irwin? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, ben says to leave backyard wrestling alone. Um, leave it alone! I won't. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> it's fucking horrendous. But I, I love when you could look at it more than a documentary, that, like, like a tape, like, uh, like, like knowledge, like, like, a, like a book in a library. Um, to be able to study a documentary is the key um, in the business, I think. Yeah, so to wrap it up, let's start wrapping up. Oh, guys, um, looking at the, for for WWE Network, they have uh, tons of them. There, they have uh, um, the rise and fall of WCCW, which is a great story, which is basically about um, the Von Erics, but they also talk about all all the guys who've been through there, like the Freebirds, uh, um, Road Warriors, who, who who hit up that Texas territory. There was one that I that I. I wanted to see, but I have to look for it because they used to have it on the network, but they don't have it anymore. Which is um, the history of Mid South Wrestling. That's actually right. a really good one. You would you would never understand how big Junkyard Dog was, and anyway, he was there Hulk Hogan in, in, in that territory. You were telling me, you were telling he me, he was humongous. Uh, Coco Ware, uh, when those guys Coco Ted, Beware, well, well, in there he was called Coco Ware. Oh, was he? Yeah. Um, well, you know, uh, Ted DiBiase, Kurt Henning, those guys who passed through there at that time, they were humongous. They were big. They were big names there. Um, when, when you also get the chance, you, you got to deep dive. You got to see what they have on YouTube. See what Netflix has available. There's also uh, on if you have a Fire Stick, and you you search wrestling, there's tons of documentaries there everywhere. Yeah, I mean they have pretty the knowledge cool. is British wrestling. They have the uh, when they talk on World of Sports, the strong style stuff. They have tons of wrestling docs. So maybe you guys will want to check that out there. And before we go, Red, come on, you got to give a quick. You cannot. End this without the Paul Heyman documentary. I did. I said it. I said I love the Heyman documentary. Yeah, but I loved it. You said it hit different though. It did. There's a difference between loving it and sitting down and going, "Wow, I've been waiting because for this I my the, entire life as I a wrestling the, fan." I love the way it was shot. I love the way the 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 progress for him was that he was okay to when you got to that he was okay with leaving wrestling, but you also had a feeling with him where it was like. No, I actually did miss it. Like he right. did, he he did miss being that part of the the game of the game. So uh, the Heyman, like I said, the Heyman one, the CM Punk one, those those are the ones that really touched down for me. That that showed that WWE. But like I said, the Ric Flair one was 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 great as well. So and we're, and we should be expecting more documentaries. Liv Morgan just announced she has her own documentary <laughs> coming out soon. Of all people, but uh, I, the the point I do want to make is 
Um, documentaries are very important in the business, just not only to see, to step into the life of a wrestler, but to understand what it takes to truly be in the business. So, and watch the movie The Wrestler because that oh, was I finally that got was, into that. That one. was basically like a a, a, lie, a fucking um a motion itself. picture documentary and shit. And so. I'm happy to say that I finally watched it. Yeah, did you you notice that you see a lot of guys in there that that's wrestlers? You're like, holy shit! I didn't Greek God that. Papa Don. Exactly. I mean, all right. <laughs> he was like, what? Okay. Yeah, right. Larry Legend was in there. Yeah, Larry Legend. All right, but so, a great, great film. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around for you guys who are watching on Facebook Live. Transition over to get vocal soon. We will be there in a second. And uh, make sure you download this episode as well as the other ones. Remember, we're doing two times a week, ladies and gentlemen. Numbers are coming in fairly, fairly well. Love to see the fact that we actually made this decision to do two episodes a week. I prefer it. it helps the listening and it helps you guys. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. I'll check you guys in a sec. It's Turnbuckle Tabloid with Jay Santee and that other guy, Matt. So on this week's episode, we pay homage to a young man who passed away last year uh, due to a tragic event. He was a friend of the show and was a... Um, I have to say that when he really didn't have to, he showed us much love and had belief that this podcast could do a lot more and was doing his most to bring a lot of people and a lot of outside wrestlers and indies to the show he helped us out throughout and we felt as though that he deserved the respect that he gave us so this week we're paying homage to our boy Matt Travis El Capo and man the dude who um was going to change the game in wrestling and had so much love and so much dedication to the business. And just for that, we'll show our dedication to him as well. So shout out to our boy Capo. We love and we miss you. I forgot you boys are from the BX, so coming into Queens, it's uh, it, it, it's like, where's Waldo and shit, looking for fucking addresses and all that shit. That's why I don't really go to the, B- the BX either. I got family in Parkchester. Yeah. I stayed the fuck away from that shit. I'm not too far away from there. Yeah? Yeah, yeah? It's crazy because, like, you could blindfold me and drop me off somewhere, and as soon as I'll get out that shit, I'll be like, oh, I'm in the Bronx, right? Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Nah, B. I actually wanted to go like to some like some events up there, but I'm like, that's like another fucking world up there. Like it is, BX it is. is far, son. It is. It's like it's a, a Uber. It's like a eight hundred dollar Uber, son. <laughs> but like, I love it though, man. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else besides. It's always house. been BX for you, like, yeah. Like, always. B- Trav has always been up there. Always. I, the whole New York City period, because. You know, I know people from Brooklyn mm. to Staten Island. Before pro wrestling, I used to just be outside with, you know, with the cats outside. Right. You, know, but, you know, being like the youngest cat out of whatever crew, mm. you know, with certain groups of people or whatever, and just always chilling wherever, like anywhere. But really, like, like when you, when you, like, when you in the, when you in Brooklyn, you've been to Brooklyn and shit, right? Yeah. There's a certain vibe that you feel when you're out there, but the BX is something like, it's so... That's to true. me, it's more cultural. Now, since we all get fucking gentrified and shit, yeah. it's just fucking it's becoming more annoying than anything. But BX has always been like something more cultural. And whenever I went up there, I always felt like somebody was going to be throwing like Spanish food at me somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I always felt that way. Either that or a, a pamper out the window or something like that. <laughs> something, yeah, something, something weird. Something wet. Yeah. <laughs> something weird going yeah. on. But <laughs> if guys don't know, I got King Capo in the building. Matt Travis, sir. Yeah, yeah, Finally, yeah. we've been we, we we've been trying to like connect for a minute. This is a dude I yo, know, and I, I I respect his professionalism because I tell the man, I said, listen, we don't really have to do it in person. We could do it, you know, over the phone. I've had phone interviews. I made it work. We can make it happen. He was like, nah, with that voice. And I know ladies who listen to the show right now is like, damn, that nigga sounds sexy. That's <laughs> a sexy voice like this shit. No, not me, ladies. I'm talking about the man here, Mr. Matt Travis. Sir, thank you for stopping by in studio. Of course. I owe it to you, man. My son is out here I wearing that, that, that 
big fur thing. Shit, I'm gonna get me one of those shits. Yeah, I, yeah, you I, got I, to. It's I, only I, right, man. Shit, I'm gonna wear that. I wear that shit in 98 degree weather if I'm a cop. That I said shit. the same thing too. If I get another one, I'm wearing it in the summertime. <laughs> Just trunks and shit. Yeah, just, trunks and coat. Not even a tank top, just straight raw dog. How do you <laughs> decide? We just before the mics went on. How do you decide to wear wrestling trunks? Like what? Like did other people go to other ways that you know they wear the, the long, the long pants or jeans or you committed? You said fuck it. I wear the trunks. Like what was what, what came to that? Because me, I make myself in two K eighteen. I don't wear no fucking trunks. <laughs> I wear. I look like fucking like one of the like uh, one of those hood niggas that still wear their Tims. And yeah. as a matter of fact, I think my two K eighteen character has Tims on. I thought about doing that in real life, wearing Tims in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think um, I don't know. It's less expensive. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I think it's more comfortable for me. I don't know. It's, it sounds weird because we wear underwear to wear in front of thousands of people. But right. I don't know. Trunks is comfortable. It's like wearing basketball shorts for me. Oh, okay. Because yeah. like I, I see some people who who commit to it, and I'm like, yeah. bravo. And there's some of y'all that's like, ooh. Yeah, they probably look nasty. Yeah, you do not. Yeah, I'm like, no, do it. Yeah, Don't do it. You have to it. do like squats and stuff to really wear trunks. And yeah. some of them do it as a rip to themselves or whatever the case oh, may be. And I'm yeah, like, for a fact. Or, my guy, why? Why do it? But I, I see that you, you've you come into the game. You've been, you've been in the business for how long already? Uh, I say like, Two years. This and two, even three. in those two years, the two to three years, like I've heard guys already give you, you know, you know praise in your ring work. You know, I've had, as a matter of fact, I had a uh, EC Negro in here one one episode, and he even brought your name up. And he was like, "Yo, I'll, I'll get in the ring with Travis. That guy's fucking work right there. He could put, I'll put him over any day." But like, when you hear that from from vets, you know, does it boost the, the ego? Does you know the the the, the King Capo, you know, the crown get a little bit heavier? No, nah, definitely not. And uh, I don't I don't think nothing of it because I'm trying to get better every day. Like when they, people, I don't know. I guess when people talk good about me, while they're talking good about me or they think I'm good at that moment, yeah. I look at myself like I'm not where I want to be at. Mm. I keep it pushing. I think that's what keep me somewhat humble mm. and uh, somewhat sane as well. Because if you stay in the same position for me, I, I feel like you're kind of a little crazy. But still, you, you I mean... Yeah, like I, I mentioned earlier before the mics went on, I said your come up was crazy in 2017 because honestly, like I've seen you getting booked everywhere for a guy who's only been in the business for like two years. That's a that's that's a that's an accomplishment in itself, man. Young man from the BX, how old are you? 23. Damn, son, I mean, <laughs> shit. You know what yeah. the fuck I was doing at 23? I think I was like still hustling on the side. Yeah, yeah. Going to college, getting you know, trying to get my my my, my weed game up because I was the only hustle I really <laughs> wanted to do. I couldn't do anything other than weed. I wasn't doing that right, shit. I was right, like, nah, right. I ain't doing that fucking football yeah. number shit. At least I go yeah. to Central Book and they'll let me go. But get your little, <laughs> get your little ass out of here. Get out of here. You do the your little pound. Weekend. Get your little bullshit ass pound out of here. The dope thing, man, is like when I was young, right, I used to be into all of that. So, like, I feel like I got all that out my system for me to even stay or get focused for professional wrestling. So, right. You know, a lot of that stuff I got my, out of my system, but I definitely I get you when, when it comes to that. Though was the call was the calling always there? Because not a lot of people will say because you know from the BX I always tell motherfuckers either you was gonna either be rapping because uh, right. Pun and Joe was gonna be yeah. your fucking your idols, a French Montana, or French uh, Max B, B you, know, the way, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like those are the guys that you was like, yo, fuck, I could spit like them, yeah. or you was gonna be in the hustle, like yeah, you know. Definitely. When the fuck did wrestling come and say, um? You got a call in here, brother. Come, 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 come check this out. Uh, it was weird for me, man, because I didn't have no intentions on being a professional wrestler at all. I just wanted to hustle. Like my daddy was a hustler before he got, before he went legit. He yeah. started working in the hospital. Um, Shout out to him because that's yeah, that's a big deal. That's what the fuck I do. Hood, right? Yeah, that's what the fuck I do. Yeah, that's and uh, he's about to retire, by the way, too. But uh. Yeah, yeah, uh, seeing him hustle. My uncle just got deported, but he was a big time, not a big time, crazy big time, but he was a, you know, he was a big dog around my way. Mm -hmm. And I used to just idolize them and, you know, the cats that was making money from Get it, Dominicano. Who, me, nah, Puerto Rican, <laughs> Ecuadorian. Uh, oh, okay, because I was like, yeah. who, what Puerto Ricans get deported? Like, what the fuck? No, my, my uncle's Ecuadorian. Oh, okay, man. I was like, what? He got deported <laughs> for attempt and just wild Damn. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'd rather him, you know, get deported than spend that time in, fe in the feds, yeah. which he, you know, he did a few. It's funny, my boy, um, years ago, he got uh, he got, he got got arrested, and um, they, were give, they was going to give him fed time, but they deported him. And the motherfucker yeah. lives in Barbados. Now, you deport the motherfucker yeah. to paradise. Yeah. 
You get me? I was the just showing. I was just showing my son, man. My my uncle just made a commercial for TV. He sent me it. Yeah. Right? For his own restaurant, he owned. That's one thing I give him. He's a hustling. But look at that shit. Hustling. It's like hustling. What punishment you gave them? You gave them sunshines and palm yeah, trees. Like. Now he's riding uh his motor his BMW motorcycles and stuff like that now. <laughs> He went from the feds to doing good, but I, that's that's the family I come from, man. Like just a bunch of hustlers. So. And they grind, and then you you see yeah. the grind in front of them. Your father will grind, and you see your uncle grind it, yeah. and then, you know, still you. You have any siblings? Yeah, I do. Younger. Yeah, younger. Yeah. So you the you the big bro, Oldest, yeah. and you always gotta kick, take care take care of the, the, the you know. So you gotta you gotta grind there. When the fuck did you hear like you know wrestling? Were you like into wrestling as a kid growing oh, up? Hell yeah, my family was into. That's the thing. Like growing up in the hood, you love certain things. And I figured you would play like, like fucking like maybe baseball or something like that, like, like <laughs> basketball maybe. Yeah. But, but oh, you oh, or scales. We got We got right? <laughs> We got to. We got to. We got to be. We got to be running the point. <laughs> we got to right, right, the point. Right. <laughs> um, I don't know. My family was always into it, so I grew up like watching it. I just remember watching and probably not even in love with it, but I fell in love with it. But mm. I remember watching it as a young kid. That's my uh, my oldest memory as a human being, like five years old, but watching pro wrestling. But nothing else came involved, like because you're, you're you're very athletic in the ring. Like I see, like you've mixed anything, like 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 martial arts, or even like gymnastics. No, I never sometimes. touched martial never arts. Never did any of that. Never was into gymnastics really. I tried it, but never was into any of that. It's just God, I get it. God it's given a talent, fucking man. cheerleader. That's what the fuck. Is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking cheerleader. No lie, God given talent, man. I just feel like I'm, I'm meant to be here, you know. Instead of being locked up like the rest of my friends are dead, like the rest of my yeah. know, countless friends. So. It was, I don't know. It was crazy. You ever had handcuffs on? Of course, it's plenty a, of times. It's not a, it's not, not a, not a. I, it's, it's funny because I was just sharing a story with, a, with one of my coworkers, and they gave me a look like, "What the fuck, you got handcuffs for?" I was like, "Listen, I never, you know, I ain't always work for the city. I did, right. I did dirt in the city." Yeah, like, yeah. But it's, it's one of those feelings that sometimes you get that wake up call. It's like, you know what? Something got to end. Like this right, got, this yeah, shit got to stop. Work. So what was it that? Because there, there wasn't a lot of wrestling schools even for, yeah, for a couple yeah, of years. It's like you know they started popping up here and there and shit. And then in the BX you had um, you had a gym up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you come out all the way to Queens. Like you had House of Glory. You out here at the dojo out here. That's a that's a work. That yeah. that's commitment right there. And you here persistently. Every like you here yeah, every day. I try to make sure I'm here as much as I can because. Um, I don't know. I look at it like this: like we live life every day, so anything can happen. So let's say if I was to walk out my building or whatever, something bad happens. You know, I want to at least live life to the fullest, you know, and at least take a step in the right direction, you know. But you still like when you look when you look at when you look at where you were at, you know, a couple of years ago. You like I said, twenty three years old, teenager was not too long ago, Definitely. and you know the the the, the resting game comes in. And you're you're on that on on that 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 ladder climbing up little by little, learning the learning the trade, taking a bump here and there. Was there a time that you sat there and said, "Man, fuck this! I can't be doing this shit." Man. So and, many times, like, man. Even taking that back bump from the <laughs> it's like no, not well, not not in that way. I I think wrestling got me more mentally than physically because no lie, like pain, I'm very pain tolerant, you know, and. uh I think mentally it had me there. Like I was like, shit. Like I don't want. I don't want to do this no more, man. This is too much for me on the mental aspect of it. Because you got to be more mentally prepared than physically prepared. If anything, if you're not there mentally, then this will eat you alive. Now, when you say that, uh, they, because I've seen a lot of cats who went into House of Glory and other wrestling uh, schools, and they go, yeah, you know, they like to wear the shirt. They like to, you know, like to walk around and say, yeah, I'm part of something. Yeah. Then, like, a year later, it's like, yo, what happened? And it's like, ah, uh, you know, this thing happened. And, word, you know, I word, had to word. do all that. Like, how is it that you 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 stay focused on doing that shit? Because a lot of times it's just, it's, it's it, like you said, mentally draining. Yeah. The body takes its toll because you does. already know the career is going to be crazy. Word. And you've been in some big fucking matches where you, like, <laughs> tore, you, you, not only the house was torn out, my body ached for that motherfucker, <laughs> for real. Like, how is it that you're able to still sit there and say, wake up with the fucking bruise on your back, the fucking, that you can still say that, yo, I got to go, I got to go to dojo today? Being passionate and loving the game, man, like, thoroughly loving it, being genuine and being hungry, man. I'm tired. I was tired of living in the hood, man. I don't know, for certain people, you know, I don't know how it is, how it is for them, but me, like, every day waking up and seeing my block. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. Let me go to the dojo. Let me let me go train. Let me go do something that's gonna help me get in that mansion or something like right. that. You know, like 
I think I guess as far as that, that's maybe like a motivation for me, like or wor- was a big thing for me. But mm. the passion and the love for the game, man. Once you once you get in this business, it's like a drug, you mm. know. And uh, I want to do it the right way. I don't, wanna, you know, I want to love it and be be respected as one like Red. Be respected as a person that genuinely loved this business. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Because I, I was about to mention Red too. Because you know, we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Because yeah. uh, those are my fucking guys. As a matter of fact, I went to go. Pick your ass up by, by, by the dojo and shit, and um, I walk in and like I said, I didn't know, you know, I I have I, I have the respect. I've never really wanted to get into wrestling, as in a, like to be in ring, but I wanted to always be around it for something. Maybe commentary, maybe right. you know, managing or whatever. But I also know certain aspects of it, and there's like certain things where I said, you know. I don't want to intrude. <laughs> like I didn't want to open the door, just yeah. go away. And as soon as I open the door to ask for Matt, and everybody's like. They give that look. Like, who that? <laughs> and Red is sitting there. He goes, yo, who that? I'm like, Santee. Turbo Cool Tabloid. And he's like, yo, yo, Santee, what up, yo? Is there, like, that 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 camaraderie that you guys have, like, your own secret world in, in the wrestling? Like, Because I know there's, like, sure. protocol in back, behind, yeah. the, behind the curtains when you're in the locker room. And everybody addresses themselves. You know, they, they introduce themselves when they know. Is there really, like, that kind of, like, secret world that you guys have back there? Yeah, for sure. It's like a fraternity. It's like a brotherhood, you know. Well, with certain people, you know, that's not... You know, on that that BS that the, that these other cats be on, but as far as like a brotherhood and who you train with or who you close with, yeah, it's like a yeah. s- super super it's like secretive. A, it's like a fucking a fraternity and shit yeah. back there. You don't even like know Freemasons and stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh-huh. And it's funny because I always I understand when a lot of a lot of guys who are in the business they hate hearing fucking marks talk the way that they talk. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, we, me and the boys is like motherfucker, we don't really talk yeah, like yeah. that. It's like y'all y'all make it seem like it's all. Does it? Does it like is there a line that you always that you put between you and the fans because you you're, although you are the most fucking angriest man I can see coming to the ring there is some kind of persona that comes over with you that that, that people are drawn to is there a way that you have that, that you have to tell motherfuckers I right, slow down like yeah. back the fuck up? of course <laughs> yeah yeah when they want to get what was dogs. the most like wild shit that a fan ever came and did to you. Countless of things, man. Like when they they try to give you a pound, like they coach you, like from the hood, and like <laughs> try to give you a hug. And I don't know, it's weird, but I draw the line when it comes when it when it gets that. Like yeah. we're not close, we're not cool. You know, there's certain people who want to be cool with you just because you're who you are, or whatever, mm. or the clout you got. You know, I'm not like that. You know. Um, All right, so now y'all motherfuckers thing. know y'all niggas ain't from the same hood. Y'all don't yeah, rock the same exactly. way, so don't right, come right, in right, that right, close. Right. right. And these, <laughs> they be on some weirdo stuff outside of wrestling. On top of that, too. So anybody wants my underwear? Plenty. Uh, <laughs> plenty. I get inboxes like, "Hey, yo, uh, you sell underwear or my trunks?" Like, that's the status I want, stuff, though. Man. I want either females, male too. I'm not prejudiced. Whatever the LGBT shit you into, you want to smell <laughs> Jay Santee's underwear? I'm cool. <laughs> I fucks with it, whatever. Put it right. in a Ziploc. I, I, I'll FedEx that yeah, shit to you. Give me, give me a rack. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we holler. Yeah. But that's another thing too, like. You you you'll come across across the spectrum when it comes to, to fans and the fan bases and all that stuff. Like, how is the like the women like is the women game like crazy though? It's crazy, but you know you gotta have. Some Don't tell the world right now. You no, shocked no, up, no, no way. You no ain't wiped up I'm right not, now. No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> no single, dude. single as a Pringle, but a single like a fucking dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say, um, yeah, you gotta have some type of discipline because you can't be messing around with all these crazy ass female, uh, you know, fans or groupies. First of all, that's not good for your health, and second, like. I'm the type of person, like, I can't mess with every female. I already been there, done that, like, yeah. early on. Messing with all the crazy gir- popping girls from the Bronx and wherever in New York. Mm. But, you know, right now I'm at a point where I want to, if I was to deal with a female or something like that, she got to, like, want to build an empire. Like, she got to be a business. You mean to tell me you go OT, you in the ring, out there, going off, and you ain't got them OT fucking Pennsylvania, fucking Virginia females Throwing that cooch at you and you you rocking that <laughs> shit. Like, like, are you serious? Dead serious. Yeah. Damn, that you all fucking. Is it, is it, is it discipline? That man. discipline is real, son. Discipline on top of that. My treat- dick would have been a submission. <laughs> <laughs> it's a discipline, but on top of that, you treat yourself like gold and you get treated like gold. You feel me? My like- balls would have been tapping out. <laughs> You're crazy. That's a, yeah. But that's a beautiful thing because uh, you, you have you don't have any kids, yet. definitely not. Not yet. Yeah. Enjoy it now. Oh yeah. I mean, no. enjoy it now. Get the run now. I'm not not that's, to say not having kids is not a beautiful thing. It is, but it enjoy is. the run that's now. That's another thing too, man. Like I, I've been through. I could tell you stories for days. Like. Younger, because before I even got into professional wrestling, I was going viral on videos, and I, 
I was in the loop with a certain group in the in the Bronx that everybody became popping and popular and stuff like that. So mm. I've been had a wave before professional wrestling. The women been there before all of mm. this. Women would try to trap me. They would be like, hey, look, uh, yeah, I think I'm pregnant. Like, crazy, yo. And I'm talking about yeah. I'm like 14, 15 years old. Listen, you only gave me top. How I'm going to got you pregnant? Yeah, some crazy <laughs> stuff like that, yo. Like, like, yo, I could tell you stories for days, man. But that's why I guess my uh, where my discipline like grew and came into, you know, fruition, I guess. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's crazy because even for, for a young man like yourself, you see... You know, certain aspects, especially especially you got guys that are that are that are ahead of you that's been training you right now, like Amazing Red, who's been all around the world, Brian Excel. You've got guys that you've been in the ring who have the experience and could tell you, like, do they 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 they, they get you under that tree of knowledge and, and share that shit and tell you, like, yo, listen, you gotta pump them brakes, man. You can't do everything like you know, like I like a lot of us back in the days, they're like running wild and doing all that shit. There's a lot of dudes out there I know that uh, got trapped up early on with oh, some yeah, rats and yeah. shit. Oh yeah, and I can't, I can't be, I can't be one of them, man. First of, if I got a child with a female, I'm gonna stick with her for a fact. <laughs> like, we gotta be solid, cause first off, I, I don't, I find myself being turned off by people nowadays on some just energy wise. <laughs> right. So in order for me to <laughs> even be around like anybody right now, we gotta have some type of like chemistry or anything mm. like that. Yeah, and plus, yeah, 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 yeah. Schedule is bananas. This shit is crazy. So they gotta, they gotta get in in, in the couples world. They gotta yeah, understand yeah, what it's gonna yeah, be about. Yeah. Speaking of that, you, like you mentioned before, growing up in the hood, you was running around with with different dudes. Like the dudes, uh, like do you, they look at you now? I'm like this. Look at this dude. This nigga, he a wrestler. Like out of everything, like you, yeah. dude, like how how's that vibe going on? I get I get that a lot. But like I say, even before pro wrestling, I was getting that regardless. You know, mm. people would look at me like I'm the like the hood star, the hood, or yeah. whatever. But now, yeah, yeah, definitely. I was just telling my son, like, I got that, at, like, early and recent. Like, whenever I come out, like, I have people come to my mother, like, hey, your, your son is da 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 or whatever. Yeah. And she'd be like, yeah, he's regular. What are you, <laughs> what are you bothering me for? <laughs> it's like, yo, his <laughs> like videos, crazy stuff. his fucking videos on YouTube got thousands of views yeah, and all that. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, I, my mouth still yeah. got to go throw out the garbage and don't mean nothing. Right, right, yeah. shit. But you still, you still. You, you know, you carry yourself well. And it, it is funny because it, it, the way that others may look at you, especially, you know, cash flow f- was huge, man. It still is. You know, and, and that persona is still resonating right now. But you, you were very, you're a very humble guy. How was it that people probably misconstrued Travis as probably the, the arrogant prick, as in uh, the dude from the BX that's still trying to get it? Well, they misconstrued nothing. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's legit me. That's a part of me. That's the reason why the character come out so organic. But I don't know, man. But as far as like that whole cash flow stuff, man, I don't know. That's that's that cat. I, I was doing my own thing from the beginning. Mm. We had a friendship, or whatever. But I don't know. You know what was the I breakdown? Know. I mean, I've, I've been watching. I was I was watching it progressively in House of Glory, and I saw that. You know, there was there was there was a bond there, but it was also a way that I saw. Travis needed to go out and break out. Like there was yeah. gonna, you know, you know, I'm with homie, but homie not let me do me. I need to do. Was that was that the sense that we were getting there? Uh, nah, not really. It wasn't just that. It was just like I just always looked at myself as a boss, right? Even when I was younger, or, uh, a businessman, you know. And uh, I just never wanted to work for anybody ever in my life. That's just the type of like mindset I got. So. Partnership, yeah, but like me being under anybody or anything like that, under the tutelage of somebody who's the same age as me. Anything was Broadway like that, feeling no. that light way? Like he was, he was ball status. Like he was trying, he was trying to hold, you know, trying try to hold you on the sun underneath the armpit. <laughs> nah, try to put, put the rest of your head on daddy chest. Yeah, never that. I know that for a fact. <laughs> never that. The thing about me and him is we we were legit brothers, so it wasn't just, it wasn't that man. But the thing is though, he he get caught up in his own world where he feel like the world revolve around him. And, you know, I get caught up with, the, obviously, because I'm living my own life. The world revolves around me, to mm. me. So I just had to step up and boss up, man, and move on up. But I'm saying, like, the, the, I would have seen, I would have thought that this was going to be a collaboration that was going to rock for a minute. But then it turned, like, the R. Kelly and Jay-Z fucking tour, like, best of both worlds <laughs> is fucked up, son. And, and he's R. Kelly. <laughs> he's definitely R. Kelly. You, you ain't bumping into, him, bumping into him in the hood yet? You ain't see him around? Nah, not really, man. Oh, not really. shit. I, I just but if be it, too it's busy, on site man. though, it's on site. It's been on site lately since he, we we like we get put with each other in these matches and stuff like that. The House of Glory love seeing us, uh, I guess, clash or wrestle or whatever. Because 
I guess we throw it, we put it all out in that ring. But as far as like me seeing, I got nothing to say about him, man. Do you? Best of luck. Keep on doing you, and I don't care about whatever he does. Just Damn, son. It's a, it's a bad falling out, son. I'm telling you, I've, I've had falling outs like that before, but it's a, it was usually over dude. Taking my girl and getting her pregnant. <laughs> but the crazy shit. thing is, though, this falling it's out another is, story, is not another no story. wrestling, like, it's not a wrestling, like, storyline. This is real life. We really legit fell out over business because he don't know how to conduct and handle business right. Mm. Like, he, Is it tough to do business in person? I, people always say that. You can't do business with fam, son. It's well, tough. You can't. You can't. It's tough. Not only that, it. it's just like, I guess, when the personal stuff cl- collides with the business, that's when things start, you know, taking a different route. Me, I'm all business. I will never let personal get in between business. Mm. You know, and I guess... Hello, as he said, it wasn't over no puss. It, was, uh, <laughs> it wasn't nah, over no puss. I could care less about that. That's like, what I'm saying. This is not that. That's what I'm saying. Like, none of my women will ever deal with anybody I'm cool with. Because, mm. like I said, the type of women I deal with, mm. you know, they boss up. They're not into none of that. But as far as, like, that cat or whatever, like, our breakup or whatever, our friendship dissolving, he know what happened, and he could tell you what's up. Me, I'm just keep on doing me because everybody's talking about me right now. I don't see it ending though. I see y'all. I see this is like one of those things that y'all y'all gonna be bumping heads for a minute though. I really do, and I ain't gonna front. I paid the ticket to that shit. Fuck that. Yeah. I'm I'm out there for that. It's crazy. You guys, my son, man. Like we've been bumping heads on the low for a minute, and this I, I knew it was gonna happen, but that's why I played my position. Like I was sitting in the back, and I knew I was gonna be in the front, and that's what happened. Now I'm in the front, and now I'm you know I'm showing why I'm gonna be the top student in the House of Glory. See. The reason why I, I had any problems with Son was because Son was the top student of House of Glory, right? And what he did, he ain't do nothing. You feel me? Like, he had, he could have been signed right now. Mm-hmm. How you still want to, like, do certain things you do and you, you could be signed. You could live a whole different life. Mm-hmm. And you let certain things mess that up. I can't do that. I don't got time to do that. You about I to get don't. that? You about to get in that paper and get in, and get them W's, man. Get, get, that's get, all it's about. Get them straps. Yeah, that's, that's all another it's thing about. too, man. Like that's, you know, that you you're, you're looking for that crown and that crown and glory, that 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 brass ring, like Vincent Kennedy McMahon would say. <laughs> you want to get that brass ring, <laughs> but you know, it, it, it's 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 to you. It's you see the grind going on because you've been there. You're, you you you've been working on it. Like five years from now, what what would what what does Trav want to do? Where Trav's gonna be at? Man, I'm not even looking into five. I'm looking into maybe next year, two years from now. I'm not waiting for no five years. I'm hustling right now, so in two years I could be good. But next five years, I see myself. I don't know being better than where I, where being in a better spot than where I'm at right now for a fact. Cause I that's what I that's just how my mentality is, man. Like when I first came into business, I told myself certain things. I said I'm gonna. I'm going to hustle hard, and I'm going to be on the show my first year. Got that out the way. My five months after that, my mini goals was I'm going to work for so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. I did all of that and did I pay per view on top of that. My other goals, all right, whatever. I'm going to wrestle the top guys in House of Glory my first whatever year. I got Homicide, wrestled Ken or whatever. If you consider him a top guy or whatever, and a few other guys, you know, mm. wrestle with Teddy Hart and whatever uh, against John Gresham and the rep and all these cool people, or whatever. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I see myself way better in a better position than what I am probably signed. We wait. I want you to get that um that six nine come up. Get, get, get that, <laughs> that King Capo New York. That's that if, come up. That's if House of Glory let me do it because they banned me from coming out to his music. Yo, I heard. As a matter of <laughs> fact, yeah, it's funny because um it was it was um I had that punk Isaac here the other day. And he's like, yo, did you know that um that Trav came out to? It? I was like, nah, I probably was at the bathroom. Shit, I would have turned up to that yeah, shit for yeah. real. People singing it and everything. I had the clean version that people was rapping it, cursing <laughs> and everything. I was like, oh, I was like, nah, this is crazy. So, yeah. I know, and it's funny because I slowly became, I, I got fascinated by the young man. He actually lives like not too far from where I work. Yeah, at. I heard. Like, I he's heard. not too far and shit. Right. So it's like, I'm, I'm on that shit where it's like, I want to like run into him. Yeah. So I could be like, because he's a wrestling fan too. Yeah, so, he is. He so is. I want to run into him and be like, yo. Um, y'all, you want to go to House of Glory? We go. <laughs> we go check it out. I was hoping to shit. bring him out, man. Like I, I wanted to send my video to him. Like, yo, you got to pull up, son, because I got people who's tied in with him from Brooklyn. Like I mess with a lot of people. Shout out to my son Storyboard P, who's a big cat in Brooklyn, yeah. and he's tied in with those cats. So, but yeah, I, hopefully one day he'll come out, man. Yeah, that's yo. As a matter of fact, yo. As a matter of fact, Brian be getting the plug. He need to find. He can get him up in there, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> get that plug. But yo, once again, thirty minutes gone. Fly, man. Yeah. 
That's crazy. Look at this. It, yeah. We're already done so here. See, we could keep it going if you want for a little bit. Shit, where we at? Where we going? At? Yeah. <laughs> nah, I gotta let you go because honestly, mm-hmm. I do want to get you back though. For sure, we can always um, do that, man. But uh, let me do some promos for you. Let me do some live review. House of Glory Wrestling presents Fair Warning Friday, May 18th. Guys, why go anywhere else on that night or any other night? House of Glory Wrestling, I'm telling you. And it's going to be at Elks Lodge. Elks is always lit for me. I always, I, I like I'm Azura, but for me, Elks is always the fucking premier for wrestling for me, man. It, that, that's where that's, that, that's where you, you, you introduce yourself to the world, right? At yeah, Elks. yeah, yeah, As yeah. I, Kick JT Dunn right in his head. <laughs> our first ever appearance. So um, make sure you check out House of Glory Fair Warning. First row tickets were already sold out, I believe, but their second and uh, general mission is still available. Make sure you check them out at hogwrestling.net. Uh, check out their Facebook pages as well as on Instagram. Uh, Matt, let them know where they can get you at on on, on social media. You can get me on Instagram at Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, three underscores, Travis, T-R-A-V-I-S. You can find me on Facebook, on, uh, Matt Travis, and uh, Twitter, Matt Travis. You're um, Turbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Tabloid.